We started with the outlook for funding. I'm more optimistic than I've been for the last six years, and that's how long I've been an IH director. We see the House and the Senate both this summer having actually made marks uh, in terms of appropriations for NIH. And now we see this uh, remarkable moment where it looks as if there is a budget deal for the next two years that breaks through the sequester, which has been the most incredibly stupid way of managing a budget you could imagine, and it's wonderful to have that released. Now, the appropriators still have to figure out how to divide this up. I will say the other really bright light in this is the 21st Century Cures Bill, which Fred Upton and Diana DeGette and others have put together, which has in it $8.75 billion for NIH over five years. That will go a long way to dealing with what has been a 12-year slide in our resources, now down about 22% from where they were in 2003. We need to turn that corner. Maybe this is the year where we will. So, Mike, I know you're a big proponent of the 21st Century Cure Bill. Where does it stand, and what do you think the chances of it being enacted are? Well, this effort that has passed the House is now in the Senate, but I, I just like to step back. When I think of the effort we put in between 1995 and 1998, with thousands of others, we had a half a million people in Washington and around the country that doubled the NIH budget, tripled the NCI budget, increased funding at the CDC and the FDA. And I think when people say, what changes the course of history, that incremental investment that stopped in 2004 has laid the groundwork for the science today. So as we think about it, those seven innings, the American people invested an incremental quarter of a trillion dollars. Are we going to be around in the eighth or ninth inning uh, from that standpoint? And other countries have already identified well that the leaders in bioscience will be the leaders in the world. Yep. So China, India, UK, Singapore, Japan, whereas we have decreased, they've substantially increased. We somewhat underestimate, and those people in business probably underestimate more than anyone the fact that more than 50% more than 50% of all economic growth in the last 200 years is tied to medical research, bioscience, and public health. And I think the statistic that I always focus on is in four million years of human evolution, from the early primates, we extended life by 11 years. That's 1900. In the last 114 years, we've extended average lifespan, average lifespan by 40 years. And so we are on the verge of eliminating many life-threatening diseases, which was why we formed Faster Cures and, and had a relationship with Francis long before his time at the NIH. But this is important, and we're really making decisions about the future of this country. And as you know, there's many challenges for medical research companies that are based here in the United States. Is one of the challenges that American people have become so addicted to short-termism and short-term results? And as it relates to precision medicine, you are looking for the root causes of diseases, not results today and cures today. Is that one of the reasons it's a challenge for America, because they simply want cures and they're not willing to go back in time? I, I don't think so, Francis. I don't think Americans are uh, not able to understand that. I think, though, our culture does tend to kind of expect immediate results. Companies are in this, you know, unfortunate situation of being driven by the quarterly report, which is probably not good for them either. Medical research is not what you'd call a 100-yard dash. It's a marathon. If we really want to see the advances that we are hoping for 10 years from now, we should be working on that now. Maybe we should have been working on it five years ago. The arc is long here in terms of going from a basic science discovery to a clinical advance. We're all excited right now about cancer immunotherapy as a great example of a real breakthrough that's happened in the last few years. If you go back and try to figure out what were the steps that got us there, a recent analysis said it was probably close to a century of work and probably 7,000 scientists who made significant contributions to get us to these checkpoint inhibitors, which are such an amazing advance for diseases like melanoma. 
So we have to think about that. We have to be sure that we're not getting so focused on, okay, all of our money's got to go to Alzheimer's. No, no, today it's got to go to cancer. No, no, it's got to go to diabetes. No, we need to be sure we're funding that entire landscape of research opportunity, because you never know where that next breakthrough is going to come through, and it often doesn't come from where you expect it. So it's, it's, I think the founding of Faster Cures was saving time saves lives. Now when Francis sequenced the human genome, it took 13 years and 3.8 billion. Today, for $1,000 in an hour, you can get your results. So we have much more at our disposal, and I personally believe that we are living in an age that you can actually find a solution for your disease in your own lifetime for the first time in history. Now the solution might be extension of life. Not that you've eliminated the disease, but you've been able to delay the ultimate outcome, potentially losing your life, till you find a solution. And this message that we're delivering, we really need to focus on the young scientist. If I step back, and look at the last 40 some odd years of our own philanthropy, I would tell you the highest rate of return has been funding young scientists, generally in their late 20s, early 30s. And most Nobel Prizes, people don't realize, but most Nobel Prizes have been issued for people who had ideas when they were in college or graduate school. They might have won them at 65, but the basis of that idea the one, the only, Michael Milken. Do you know there are 75 people leading companies today who originally worked for wow. Michael back Isn't in the structural? Wow, that's a legacy. 75, uh. and they just did their 25-year anniversary.